Here's some advice for Joe Biden and his media apologists. If you don't want to be compared to Adolf Hitler, well then don't sound like Hitler, don't look like Hitler, and above all, don't borrow from Hitler's playbook, as Joe Biden did with his dangerous speech last Thursday. Now, it's long been said, in fact, it's called Godwin's Law. The first person in an argument to liken the other side to Hitler, they lose. They lose. Too extreme. And right now we do see complaints that Biden's critics have gone too far in likening Biden to Hitler in his call to arms last week, where he painted tens of millions of Americans, Republicans, as enemies of the state, agents of evil, working in the dark. I mean, just look at the spooky lighting and the soldiers behind Biden that emphasise, yes, he was indeed talking about some kind of war. The Republican Party today is dominated, driven and intimidated by Donald Trump and the MAGA Republicans. And that is a threat to this country. MAGA Republicans do not respect the Constitution. They do not believe in the rule of law. They do not recognize the will of the people. MAGA Republicans have made their choice. They embrace anger. They thrive on chaos. They live not in the light of truth, but in the shadow of lies. But we're told, don't compare that to Hitler. I mean, even though the people who choreographed that speech and the spooky background and the soldiers and the dark, they sure seem inspired by the aesthetics of the Nazi propagandist Leni Riefenstahl in her most famous film promoting Hitler, also against the sort of apocalyptic sky with militarist symbols. But what Biden did last week was actually much more serious than, you know, borrow Hitler's paintbrush for the, uh, for the background. Have you actually listened to Hitler's speeches? You will find that he, like Biden now, singled out a political party of opponents and also demonised them, literally made them seem like demons in the dark, destroying the nation. Here are some of Hitler's famous speech in 1933. This is just after he became... Germany's Chancellor, giving the Biden treatment to Germany's communists and socialists. Damals gelobte ich mir zum ersten Mal als unbekannter Eiserer diesen Krieg zu beginnen und mich zu ruhen, bis endlich diese Erscheinung aus dem deutschen Leben beseitigt sein würde. Ab gerade an der Klasse als tragend unter sich wissen will und die er einer besseren Zukunft entgegenzuheben verspricht. Same kind of tactic, but, but of course you're right, you're right. You know, Biden is no Hitler and it's mad to say that Biden is that dangerous and that murderous and that evil, even that shouty. But it is not wrong to say that Biden, in this one respect, is using Hitler's trick of making his political enemies seem almost subhuman, virtually declaring war on them. And war, I mean, that is sure how some in the media left saw it, a declaration of war against Biden's fellow Americans. Except these media figures actually approved. The speech last night to me sounded like a president delivering a wartime address. So let me underline that. That is a Washington Post columnist actually saying, without a word of criticism, that the president of the United States has given a wartime address, except that the war that he's talking about is against many, many millions of Americans who support the other side of politics. What is this? People now vilified by their president. People being declared a real and present danger, promoting political violence, the end of democracy. They promote authoritarian leaders and they fan the flames of political violence that are a threat to our personal rights to the pursuit of justice, to the rule of law, to the very soul of this country. I believe America is at an inflection point, one of those moments that determine the shape of everything that's to come after. And now America must choose 
to move forward or to move backwards, to build a future or obsess about the past, to be a nation of hope and unity and optimism, or a nation of fear, division, and of darkness. That is so bizarre, uh, so inflammatory. But I want to talk here about the hypocrisy. You might have noticed some of it just there in that clip we played. And I'm not talking here about the hypocrisy, you know, about the complaints we're hearing. How dare people liken Biden's speech to Hitler's, uh, never compare people to Hitler. He was uniquely evil. It trivializes what you're talking about, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Well, it's funny that. You see, it was once perfectly fine to compare Donald Trump to Hitler. I mean, the Washington Post thought nothing of it nor did leading Democrat politicians. In fact, Joe Biden was flirting with that same idea before his speech, just days before, saying, you know, we're seeing here an extreme MAGA philosophy, make America great again, a MAGA philosophy that's not just Trump, it's the entire philosophy. It's like semi-fascism. And, of course, when challenged to explain what he meant, Biden, well, he couldn't or wouldn't, but he wouldn't back off either. What do you mean by semi-fascism, In December, you will... You know what I mean. Now, but I want to talk about another hypocrisy here, and it's a, a, a much bigger one. Now, I agree that Donald Trump is wrong, even stupid, and is doing damage by denying he was beaten at the last election. But he is no fascist, whether semi or total or whatever. For a start, he wants less government, not more, not like the Democrats. But, more importantly, look also at which party has actually done most to foster political violence in the US. Here is Democrat Senate leader Chuck Schumer threatening two Supreme Court judges for not doing what he and the left wants. I want to tell you, Gorsuch, I want to tell you, Kavanaugh, you have released the whirlwind and you will pay the price. And sure enough, when the Supreme Court defied these threats and said abortion rights should be decided by state politicians, not unelected judges, just making up laws, those judges had protesters daily outside their homes. They had threats. There was even a guy coming around to try and kill one of them, with Joe Biden saying nothing, nothing about this frightening intimidation. Look back a bit earlier, when city after city in America was being torched by Black Lives Matter activists, backed by the left, with blocks of Minneapolis left in smoking ruins, shopkeepers there wiped out. Where, you might ask, was Kamala Harris, the Democrat, now vice president. She was actually raising money to bail those rioters, to put them back on the streets. And when members of the Trump administration were being harassed and threatened in their homes or in their neighbourhoods or where they were out shopping, you even had Democrat politicians like Maxine Waters calling for even more of that. And if you see anybody from that cabinet in a restaurant, in a department store, at a gasoline station, you get out and you create a crowd. And you push back on them and you tell them they're not welcome anymore, anywhere. Now, does any of that by the Democrats excuse some of Donald Trump's language? Of course not. Of course not. But nor does anything that Trump has done excuse Joe Biden declaring war on so many Republican voters, dividing, demonizing, spreading hate giving a wartime speech in America at peace. What mayhem is he trying to unleash? And Democrats should be ashamed that Biden has given Donald Trump the right to say this. The most vicious, hateful and divisive speech ever delivered by an American president vilifying 75 million citizens. Joe Biden claimed he would heal America. He'd bring Americans together. What dark forces inspired him to instead tear them apart?